Welcome to Heresy Today. Previously, we spoke about the influence of moralistic therapeutic deism on the modern church and the drive to be seen as cool, hip, and acceptable by the world. This desire to be accepted not only influences the outward appearance and practices of the church, but also core doctrine. As we've discussed, MTD is focused on happiness, life fulfillment, and experiences. This creates an obvious conflict between unsaved, unrepentant sinners and God's Word. Unsaved people enjoy sin. They love sin. Sin brings them happiness. Therefore, God's demand that we turn from sin means to the unsaved person a turning away from the things that make them happy. Only a realization of their eternal condition, damnation, can make them understand their desperate need for the saving sacrifice Jesus made for them. The first step in this realization is conviction of sin, conviction by the Holy Spirit. But conviction is uncomfortable. It flies in the face of the happiness gospel that MTD preaches. It contradicts the MTD belief that people are by nature good and therefore are already deserving of heaven. This is the easiest way to identify an MTD church. If they're unwilling to talk about the seriousness of sin, the justifiable wrath of God, and the physical reality of hell for unrepentant, unregenerate sinners, then they've put the feelings of men over the sound doctrine of God. God warns us of this time in 2 Timothy chapter 4, starting in verse 2, God says through Paul, Preach the word, be urgent in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all patience and teaching. The MTD church, however, does not preach the true word of God. They do not show the necessary urgency to warn the unsaved that at any moment they may leave this life and enter an eternity of conscious physical torment in hell. Rather, they hide the truth. They specifically avoid reproof and rebuke. They do not exhort to personal holiness and they do not patiently teach the truth of God's Word. Instead, they go for the quick fix. They promote emotionalism through music and motivational speeches. Rather than speaking the truth about the anxiety caused by the conflict between God and willful sinners, they focus on the individual's pleasures, ambitions, and desires. They avoid making people uncomfortable about their sins and the consequences of them. I recently heard a local pastor discussing in his sermon a couple of movies that he had recently watched. Both were full of sinful content, according to the Dove.org reviews. One in particular, an R-rated movie, was laced with profanity, blasphemy against Jesus Christ, and even female nudity. So for all those in the congregation that enjoy indulging in these sensual pleasures of the world, could they ask for anything better than for their pastor to be indulging in them too? Not only do these pastors not rebuke sinful behavior, not only do they refuse to even call these things sins, but they themselves are indulging in them as well. They give their lost flock salve for their conscience. Well, if the pastor's watching this movie, it must be okay for me too, the willful sinner tells himself. Sin, and therefore the need for Jesus, is not spoken about. Is it any wonder then that Jesus is relegated to a life improvement coach? Is it any wonder that his words are ignored? One of the greatest examples in the Western professing church today of the influence of MTD is this notion that a physical hell doesn't exist and that God would never send anyone there if it did. This idea is promoted by many, many celebrity Christians today. Most of the leaders of the emergent church movement support this notion. And since many in the modern professing church don't study their Bibles, none of these adherents has had to explain all the times that Jesus mentioned hell. 
In Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, Jesus says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Not only does Jesus confirm the existence of hell, but he warns us to fear him, God, who is able to destroy body and soul in hell. We're supposed to be afraid of the reality of hell. We are to be terrified of God who can send people to hell. In Hebrews 10, verse 31, we're told that it is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But this is not the God of MTD. The God of MTD serves the individual and his desires. But the true God, the God of the Bible, demands honor and obedience from the individual. The God of the Bible is the focus. The God of MTD is the servant and the individual is the focus. And of course, this is exactly the way prideful, self-focused, willful sinners would have it. MTD proves its demonic source by directly contradicting the God of the Bible, by directly contradicting the object of worship and obedience. MTD has placed man above God. This demonic deception dooms people to hell because God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. The doctrine of the severity of sin, the just punishment for sin, and eternity in hell is a doctrine that is purposely ignored by moralistic therapeutic deism. This denial of sin and its serious consequences flows through all parts of the doctrine of MTD. Man, rather than God, gets to decide what is right and what is wrong, what is sin and what isn't. We see this most prominently today with the embrace of homosexuality by the professing church. Mainline denominations, supposed evangelical, and emergent churches all find convenient ways of ignoring God's word on this subject. And why? Because MTD is about personal happiness. If the sin of homosexuality, or for that matter, fornication, profanity, greed, divorce, or pride makes a person happy, then there's no need to stress about it. At the very least, people are told, Jesus will forgive you, even if you have no desire or intention to turn from your sins and believe in Jesus to obedience. This notion that Jesus died to purchase a license to sin is pure heresy. Jesus did not die in order to allow us to sin. He died because of our sin. And a truly saved person is regenerated by God's Holy Spirit so that they no longer desire to sin. But the twisted doctrine of MTD never speaks of regeneration, sanctification, or true repentance. Because the goal is happiness, and as we've said before, sin is happiness to willful sinners. These fundamental doctrines, sin, God's justifiable wrath, repentance, obedient faith, justification, regeneration, sanctification, these are never discussed in MTD churches. It's the doctrine of self that's taught, the doctrine of happiness, self-satisfaction, God serving the needs of people and the fulfillment of man's desires. And in this, the truth of God's word is revealed again. As we return to 2 Timothy chapter 4, we read in verses 3 and 4, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but having itching ears will heap to themselves teachers after their own lusts and will turn away their ears from the truth and turn aside unto fables. The MTD Church and its adherents will not endure the sound doctrine of the Bible. They will not endure the reality of hell, even if Jesus spoke of it. They will not endure true repentance because they love their sins and can't imagine their lives without it. 
They will not endure obedience to God, His will over theirs, His control over their lives, rather than their control over their lives. So they've heaped to themselves false teachers, teachers who tell them that their lusts are okay, teachers who tell them that there's no condemnation, no eternal punishment. They have turned their ears away from the truth and they have embraced the fable of moralistic therapeutic deism. The professing church in America today is the church of 2 Timothy chapter 4. It is prophecy fulfilled in our midst. Yet those caught up in this false religion refuse to see their own folly because they refuse to acknowledge the truth of God's word. They've chosen man's word over God's and they will reap the due penalty of their error. Next week, we'll look at how MTD has affected evangelism and the building of unbiblical churches. If you'd like to hear a clear and complete gospel presentation, please visit the Basics section of our website and Roku channel. If you have any comments or questions, please email us at ht at jesusforsinners.com. That's ht at jesusforsinners.com. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week. God bless. <music>